Welcome to the show. First time yeah. for you. Thank you. Um, so. What I just want to start with is uh, Apex. Let's let's kind of give an idea. A lot of people have been asking me even like what's going on here, what's happening. So just run us through the process of, of, of where this all began and, and, and how we got to where we are now. That is Apex in Bryce. Well, okay. you know, uh, for, for, for all of us um, training with Rich, Rich had sure. all started his team out quite a while ago saying that he wants his athletes to get to where they have their own gyms and they're competing against each other and you know he'll have a, he wants his students being the coaches of every next facility there is in the country so we're branching out now if you look really a few of his students are and um, we're following in that, in that line and hopefully going to take his coaching and what he's taken us and the knowledge that he's given us and shared to, to the rest of the country you know? yeah. and um, on all platforms we can. Cool and um, was this uh, an idea that you guys as brothers had like all through growing up, you know, yeah, no. this, <laughs> this yeah, is a dream for us. Yeah, sure. we've wanted to have our own gym for a, a really long time, and uh, the opportunity came through investors and sponsors and that saying that you know we'll back you guys, let's do this, and um, we got started. And okay. yeah, we've we built up to where we where we are now at the moment. We still have a lot to do and a lot of growth still needs to take place. But yeah, we're very fortunate. Hundred percent, and. Um, I just want to, obviously the two of you have been uh, brothers your whole lives, so wh what was it like growing up with, with two brothers in, in almost with a, with a similar sort of path, obviously you guys have gone slightly different directions in a sense, but yeah, sure. at, at the heart of it it was, it was combat sports, so yeah. were, you, were you hanging out in bars beating the crap out of locals or, or <laughs> what was going on? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> <it's>, uh, <laughs> no, no we probably before, before we started fighting, <laughs> but, uh, as a sport. Yeah, I think we used to get into our, like fights occasionally, and I think that's probably why we both started boxing was sure. to learn how to defend ourselves properly. And um, from there, we we realised, look, if we're going to do this, we might as well do it properly. And if we're going to put all our time and effort in, then let's do it for real. And that's that's what we've done. I mean, he started boxing before me. I followed in his footsteps when it came to the amateur boxing, and we were pursuing a, an Olympic career. And uh, things didn't work out that way just with certain politics and, and things like that in the sport. So we turned to MMA when I when I got to about 18, or oh, 21, I started boxing when I was 18. And um, he followed straight away into the MMA scene as well. And um, yeah, for the last eight, nine years, I've been at, at the MMA sort of training and, and uh, looking at getting back into the boxing as is great. Okay, so it's, it's almost like you've done like a, a kind of a full 360 from, from boxing to MMA back to boxing. Yeah. And we're going to get into that now. Yes, yeah. uh, Craig, for those who don't know, just kind of give us give us a run through uh, your experience in MMA. And, and you, I, I just want to jump ahead there. You're one of those guys, am I right in saying that you found a place more as a coach as opposed to an, an athlete? Yes, yeah, 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 no, most definitely. Okay, cool. So, yeah. so just kind of guide us through through your, your uh, short run as an MMA athlete. Uh, MMA, when I was obviously a bit younger, and it was a bit younger in the, in the country, I used to fight small promotions like Fight Force and sure. AFL down in Durban and all guys who fight EFC now were, cool. were guys that I fought back then, you know, Matt Bursky, Saxon Delafield, um, I fought in Fight Force against Brian Slabbert when I was 15, I mean, there was no, there was no <laughs> junior fighters <laughs> then, so yeah, so we were, back then it was, it was still young and we were just looking for fights and from what it's grown into from there being no industry at all to there being an industry, grasping that is important and grasping what we can do with it is important. And um, as a gym now, as in a facility, obviously growing up, I mean, we used to spar with each other in the backyard and our, <laughs> we try to convert our garages into gyms. We, sure. we tried everything we could. And now that we have a facility under coaches and, and with a great team and guys that are willing to be here every day, we, like, we can do that. You know, We can learn more and we can progress more. Um, but yeah, after, after a couple of, of, of boxing matches, I started when I was in grade four. So I don't know how, how old you are in grade four. Very young. Like 10 or 11. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. And I um, had a couple of boxing matches, probably about 58, uh, 258, 42, 58, some white collars in there. Okay. And um, we've gone to MMA, fought five stars, had 26 MMA fights, five losses, all from, from armbar. I'm still still, <laughs> still learning the jits. Um, obviously coming from a, from a boxing background, yeah. So, um, awesome. you know, having and making a name in the MMA, especially for Boyd, has, has allowed us to to now start with boxing and, and try try to get further with using that and using our names from the MMA scene in the boxing industry. Sure, sure. Um, let's just look at that, uh, jump into the boxing. So, 
Wait, what, what, what was the decision behind? Obviously, I, I think news broke last night that, that you're finally going to get your, your pro debut uh, in boxing under Golden Gloves. Where did that transition come from? What made you spark to go back to boxing? I think it's just always been sort of a bucket list uh, thing of mine that I wanted to do. I, I loved the amateur boxing when I was competing. Uh, I fought out of Burke Collins in Springs and um, I had about 34 amateur boxing fights and um, it was something that I really wanted to pursue and, and found MMA through that. Not that I, I love it, MMA any less, uh, boxing is just an art and a different type of sport that I want to sort of test myself in. Okay. Um, and is it, a, is, is it a decision that's basically like, like you said, it's obviously just a bucket, it's something you really want to do. A lot of MMA fans will, will be asking the question, will, will they see you again? Yeah, look, I think I, I want to test myself in the boxing world and, and fully commit to that and see how that works out. And um, I'd definitely like to put on a show for the MMA fans again one day. Okay, so so what goes into that now? Obviously, you, you, you've been preparing for MMA fights for the last uh, like quite a while, in quite a few years. How does your how does your training change and where does your where does your brother fall into that? So my training has changed from sort of taking out the wrestling and the jiu-jitsu aspect of, of our striking and obviously you no know, kicks, knees and elbows. Um, but a lot of the stuff we do in MMA we can still use in boxing, certain sort of striking styles. And um, yeah, now I've obviously I've got to go and spar with some boxers, which I'm doing at Hotbox with Colin Nathan and uh, uh, Rena Liebenberg has been amazing with me and um, when it comes to the techniques and pad work and things like that I've got Rich and Quaid and uh, I've got really good sparring partners in, in Rich, uh, Quaid, Trestle and Mark Sure. and um, yeah they're pushing me now so you know I, I need that push. Okay cool uh, and, and you know, what do you see? Yeah, go for it. You know I think, I think uh, everyone forgets that you know we, we started off boxing sure. you know, and uh, there was a time when amateur boxing, we were doing the Olympic boxing, we were full vest, headgear, everything. Sure. We were going every weekend, we never missed a Saturday. And um, every Saturday, eventually every Wednesday, there was, there was training at uh, camps in Kempton Park in Springs, in Pretoria, at Transnet Clubs, at Boysons, at all these amateur boxing clubs that we were going to. And eventually, we kept going to every event and we were getting fights. Okay. And uh, none of the coaches wanted boys to fight their guys. Obviously, boys is in a heavier division, and I was in a bit lighter. I mean, my first, first fight was 36. KG boys, <laughs> boys fighting is like 71, you know. So sure. against the bigger guys that were trying to go pro, none of the coaches wanted to face. None, none, one, they didn't want their fighters to fight there because it'd be bad on their record on their books, you know. And uh, after two years of going to every tournament and not getting a fight and getting a fight here and then and not competing, you know, MMA was then. There was a lot of tournaments happening. There was a lot of things coming up. And being an active and aggressive guy or, or, or an active fighter, would obviously want to get back in there and compete where there wasn't that much in South Africa to do boxing wise. So a lot of the boxers will say, you know, uh, why don't you just stick to it and stick to your sure. love of the sport and all that. But at that time, there was nothing. There was nothing to look back on. There was no hope for it. There was no looking at it as a career. There was no cash in the, in the sport at all. But where there was cash was going into the MMA, which you could use your boxing. Sure. So to use your tools and use that to get somewhere else and get further, is that what, that's what we've done. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool, mm -hmm. man. Yeah, it's like obviously it's... Uh, it's, it's, it's become quite a quite a world uh, phenomenon, uh, thanks to Conor McGregor, yeah. uh, Floyd Mayweather. Yeah. I'm not going to call you the Conor McGregor of South African boxing. But <laughs> no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in the in, in the bar. How, how has it been? Uh, like obviously dealing with with Africa's biggest MMA promotion in the EFC, uh, dealing with arguably Africa's biggest boxing promotion. Um, I know we spoke a little while back, and there was a couple of things that were happening and transitioning. What's that whole like? Uh, you say like a management transition being like yeah. moving over from, from MMA to, to the boxing Look, side? I think uh, EFC and MMA in general have it down to a fine art with regards to organization and managing their fighters and looking after the guys and um, you know Rodney Berman's also got his, his business under control and uh, there's, there's certain things in both uh, organizations that can be better and um, you know as fighters you always want the best and you always want to be treated the right way and I feel that both the promotions have done that so far. Sure. And um, what's it like, I mean, you spoke quite a, at a young age, uh, competing quite hectically. What was that like, like mentally dealing with those sort of things at such a young age and now having to, you can jump in from there, having to transition 
your, your thought process into into a boxing background? Is, is there any major difference? Obviously, we, we saw. I think one of the big things that, that comes into question is uh, duration of fights, gas tanks, that sort of stuff. Um, that's also why I asked about the training. But, but what's the mental side like? To I mean, at a young age, yes, competing, yeah. you, you had immense yeah. amount of fights. Yeah, no, definitely. I think from especially from coaching the kids sure. now, I understand more of my own background and sure. more of the backgrounds that we came from, seeing how they react to certain things. Sure. You know, obviously, uh, uh, if you're going to, to a tournament and you've got a guy who's got 10 fights and you've got a kid who's got no fights and you put it together and the kid with no fights loses and he comes out, he's going to have a big confidence you know, deduction. You know, sure. he's going to take a big big knock on his confidence of, of where he's going to be and how he goes and places himself in his own little tribes and, and places in school, you know. So you've got to, you've got to try as coaches, I think, it's very important in this country to try and let the kids grow and, and learn the right things without getting beaten. You know, and, and brought down and, and broken down. I think we could do everything that we can to try to build them up more. Sure. I think that would be better. You know, where where we were, we had a very old school way of, of training. Just train hard and get in the ring and spar every night. And if you weren't there, you couldn't compete. Sure. You know, so I mean, we went every day and we were, we were out there with different guys that had a lot more fights than us. We were probably the only two English guys there. You know, we were, we were called Sotis. So Sotis always <laughs> came and the Sotis brothers would come in there, run and they'd try to keep up with Afrikaans guys. And, you know, back then, they didn't, they didn't care how tough you were, sure. or how, how smart or how dumb you were. <laughs> you had to be hard, you know? Sure. So there wasn't a choice. And um, I think that, in that instance, you only get a few. One one in a few. But sure. if, uh, in, in out of those clubs, you only get one in a few students that would that would prosper. That would be the diamond. But in a place where you have controlled coaching and the right kind of coaching, where we now, from then, have, have developed it, and can now broaden and we can have 30 students all walking out here with confidence and knowing that they can handle themselves. Yeah, I mean, that's awesome. Uh, that's a big revelation in, 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 in coaching moving yeah. forward. Like, what is the right mental approach, especially with the younger generations? I mean, they, these are the guys that will be the, the future of all the sports. Yeah. It's, it's, it's nice to hear how, how you're thinking about that. So, boy, the next part of that was, what's it like mentally having to now cross over into, into a boxing kind of scenario? So, your first fight, you said, is going to be, be a four-round fight. So, Marat, yeah. Marat, so yeah, well, it, it's probably going to be changed to a six rounder now okay. by the looks of things. And yeah, I think I'm, I'm really excited for the transition over from one way to boxing. A, you can't take me down anymore, and you yeah. can't hold me on the ground anymore, so now you have to deal with my hands. Sure. And um, vice versa. Yeah. And if the guy's got better hands than you, than you in boxing, you're in trouble. So be fit, be strong, and it is. It's a really difficult sport to get fit for, and you have to be super fit and super strong. Uh, it's a little bit different to the MMA in a sense that you don't need as much strength and sort of conditioning as you do, you know, because you're wrestling and you're grappling as well. Sure. It's a different type of energy and a different type of aerobic system. Where boxing, you're going 12, 3 minute rounds, you've got to be fit. Sure. Yeah. sure. And um, the, the temptation to throw in knees and elbows and run well, look, if, if the guys get dirty, then they're going to catch one or two. <laughs> <laughs> just no. in your contract Look, about, yeah, about yeah, the, yeah, yeah. that's also quite a nice sort of confidence boost there you know even if they're a lot better than you just with their hands you you know at the end of the day if it ever came down to it you're a better athlete and fighter all around sure. in combat sports but that's not what it's about it's about beating a boxer at his game sure. and uh, that's the challenge i'm excited for and i'm sure there's a lot of people excited to, to, to see how that all unfolds yeah Again, MMA fans, I guess, will be asking the question. Obviously, your last fight was uh, was abroad. Well, is there a possibility that, that we will see you back in the EFC? Yeah, or is it still uh, we, we uh, want to see how the boxing career goes, but definitely in the future, I'd, I'd like to step back into the hexagon and, and have a few fights. <coughs> I'm definitely not closing any doors, uh, but boxing, boxing is where I want to be at the moment, and I want to test myself there go for a title and um, yeah we'll see how we'll see how it goes after that you know if the crowd and, and the boxing want me there and, and um, I've got a lot of support and a lot of backing then that's where I'll stay. 100% man and just in closing point just those those details on the fight it's, it's coming up in December yeah 8th of December, December. Um, it's, have you got an opponent yet? Or no opponent just waiting? yet but it's uh, at Empress Palace for Golden Gloves and it will probably be a six rounder. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you can jump in, just give us a run about Apex. 
what's happening, where can people find you guys? Yeah. Guys, please, uh, please join us. We, we up and available from 6 in the morning till 7 in the morning and 7 in the evening till 7 in the <laughs> From 6 in the morning till 7 in the morning. Morning and night, they're available. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. available. <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, Apex yeah. HQ in Bridgestone. Yeah. Um, you guys are on, online, obviously. Yes, yeah, we've got our website up and going now. And 100%. We take a look at it more like last time. So. 100%, man. And it's a great yeah. facility. I encourage anybody to come out and check it out. Yeah. Uh, obviously, world class coaching. And uh, yeah, if you're, if you're in town, pop in and say hello to these lads. Thank that's you. All. Thank, yeah. cool, sure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank sure. you. Good luck for your boxing. Thank you. Should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot. Cool man. Ciao.